One of the biggest problems that I faced when I was starting out with Bubble is primarily around responsiveness, especially with repeating groups. So being able to make a repeating group collapse and look good on an iPhone all the way through to a 27 inch iMac. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make your headers um, within the first row um, because a lot of the time I was putting it outside the repeating group and as you um, collapse the group, everything gets thrown out and it's a nightmare. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can have uh, more columns, uh, more data across the page on a bigger screen and then collapse that down to look good on a smaller iPhone screen or a smartphone screen. All right, let's dive in and I'll show you how uh, to make your repeating groups more responsive. So the first thing we want to do to create our data table is to add a repeating group. We've got some sample data here. We change this to extended. Now instead of making our columns um, as, as like for example, if we had five columns like this, this is how we um, traditionally do it. Um, these aren't resizable and they won't collapse. Okay, so we just make it one because we're going to build our own columns um, within our one column. So for example, we're going to create a group here and we're going to call this our profile picture okay add this into a group so we have our whole data row being one particular group just so we can style this um, we'll give this a little bit of gray We'll get rid of our dashed lines. Now this group here is what's going to be contain our header. So we'll give this a darker color and add our header text. Center. Make that white, okay? So we only want to show our header on the first row. So we're going to untick uh, element if it is visible on page load and add a condition saying when current cell index is one, this element is visible, okay? I'm just going to give us a little bit more space, so I'll change this to three rows. Add our profile picture. Okay, we just need to give this some data. And I've got a profile picture here. Give this 200 roundness just to make the profile picture circle. And let's just have a look and see how that's turned out. Okay, so we have our first column of data. Now we just copy that. Make that one pixel wide. This can be our first name. And this equals the data's 
first name. Okay, let's just have a look and see how this is displaying on the preview. Okay, we just want to center that text. Okay, one thing we can do is just give this a little bit of color. And now we just copy and paste our data across. And then we just fill in each of our sections here. So this will be our last name. So we're just populating our uh, repeating group with our data. So we have our first name, our last name, our number, and we'll just say data and data. Okay, so we've just populated this repeating group with some uh, sample data there, and we can see that uh, we have everything, but it's just not collapsing. There's too much data to display on a smaller screen. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is just um, on our first one, we just want to uh, click on define each border independently, and we're going to go top left and make that round, and then on our last column. We do the same. Okay, next thing that we need to make sure is that these header groups, which I'd forgotten, actually when it's not being displayed, that it collapses. Okay, so we'll just go through Okay, so we have a nice repeating group displaying um, different data here. And as we collapse, you can see that there's just too much to try and minimize. If we make these um, a lot smaller, you're still not going to be able to fit them uh, within our um, smaller screen size. Okay, so to do that, Select our parent, and that will um, expand our um, main uh, group that holds all this information just to expand it out just so it looks better um, on your bigger screens. Just like that. Okay, now we, to make this work, um, there's a couple of things that we want to do. We want the text to get smaller as our screen gets smaller and then we want to hide certain data fields um, from being displayed okay so to do that we can go into each of our text elements and say when width is less than or equal to 920 Our font size goes from 14 to 12 and we just copy and paste that into all our headers okay so you can see our text elements and headers have decreased in font size as we got smaller okay so the next thing we want to do is make sure that we're in our responsive um, uh, engine here and as we bring this down so what we're going to actually do is we're going to put um, you can put different options here so if you wanted them to download some data or add notes or comments you so you can add different icons we're going to add a more icon so when when people are viewing it on on mobile 
they just click on um, the icon here and that can display all the data um, so the user can still get access to the data that's uh, being displayed on the larger screens. Okay, so to do that, just go and add a icon. Okay, so we've got some icons here. And as we shrink, everything still goes out of whack, okay? So what we want to do is go into our responsive engine. And as we collapse this, we don't want these to wrap under, under each other. So we want to make this big enough to not be able to collapse them. And then the, we can choose some of the data fields. So if you go select parent and make sure that they're selecting the actual group and we're going to hide this when the page gets to this size and that will bring it back. And then you just bring it down and when it wraps down again, the same again. Okay, so we've just hidden, um, we still there's too much space to have too many options. Um, but this way we, on mobile, we can fit the profile picture, first name and last name. And then as we open it up, Okay, we're just going to make these Okay, so we're just going to hide these as we get smaller and if you see them drop out of order like that then we can just collapse these as we need. Okay, so as our screen size collapses, we just simply hide certain data fields that we can't fit into the screen, okay? So now if we have a look at our preview and see what that looks like, we can see as we collapse our screen, data is collapsing, okay? So the, the one other thing to make it look good is uh, because we're losing this space, we can change, um, our headers to go from round to square, okay, because it just looks a little bit nicer. So to do that, we just put a condition in our header, saying when width, width is less than or equal to, just try 1200, our border roundness top left goes to zero. Okay, so once our screen size becomes smaller, we're making use of as much of that screen space as possible. Okay, so now that um, we don't have as much data um, being displayed in this repeating group as we do here, we can make this option um, to have a drop down, so a, a group focus um, that will display all the data. So to do that, we need to convert our, our group here into a reusable element. And the reason for that is because we're going to have a drop down group focus, it's not going to display because we're using a repeating group. So we right click and convert to a reusable element and we'll just call this 
move. Okay, so within our repeating group, we want to add a group focus. And we just want to set that up to be minus maybe. Okay. Okay, so this will display when we click on it. Um, you can style this. I won't spend too much time styling this at the moment, but what we can do is we can say our group focus is displayed when our uh, feather icon is clicked. Okay, so we want to element show our group focus. And here we can put our repeating group display. I won't style this too much, but um, we could say that our repeating group sample data is our first name. Okay, so you can fill this up with as much data as you'd like, uh, depending on uh, the information that you're displaying. So if we go back to our dashboard tutorial, and because we converted this to a reusable element, we need to delete that and bring our um, reusable element back onto display here. Okay, so we've got 14 pixels. Okay, let's just have a look and see how that looks. So on a large screen here, uh, you can see that it's got all the data fields that we wanted to display, a uh, few icons and buttons, uh, but as our screen gets smaller, uh, we're losing data. Uh, but as we click on there, you could populate this with all the information that the user needs to access, all the way down to mobile size. So yeah, make sure that you style this to look a little bit better to match your design, uh, but that gives you uh, pretty much a general idea on how you can make a repeating group look good uh, on all screen sizes. Okay, I hope that helped. Um, yeah, if you like this tutorial, again, this is a new channel, so let us know if you're you know, finding this valuable. Um, hit subscribe, uh, leave a comment, and um, yeah, we'll see you in the next one. Cheers, guys.